Hey everybody, this is Mr. Bells here. Um, this is for geometry. In geometry, we're going to start working on a unit called transformations and how that looks. Um, give you a quick little idea. Um, one of our transformations is something called a translation. Translation takes any object, uh, like take the outline of my hand, and can slide it. And it can slide it uh, horizontally, can slide it vertically, either up or down. They can slide it on diagonals, um, but that's uh, that's what a translation is. Uh, another possibility for transformations are things called reflections. If I take my hand just like this, and I was to flip it over so it looked like this, assuming uh, that it's palm to palm like that, that would be considered a reflection. Um, uh, then we could have a transformation looks like this. We could take a hand and sort of reflecting it. We could turn it, that would be a rotation. Um, there are special transformations that are combinations of those uh, that looks like this, like a um, kind of like handprints like this or footsteps if you see it on the beach, which involves a translation and then a reflection, and those are called glide reflections. And then there's other uh, transformations that could take an object like this, like a hand, and I can't really do it, but shrink it down. How about this? Um, you can see how big my head is in your screen right now. See how big it is there? Back again. That would be considered a dilation because we're changing its uh, size. Okay? Uh, just like if they dilate your pupils when you go to get your eyes checked, your pupil could go from this big to this big uh, after they do that dilation. Okay? So those are the things that we're going to talk about. We're going to start with translations right now and something called a vector. Four one G O A translation. So yes, uh, chapter four, section one in the book. So first off, uh, translation takes any shape like this. Uh, I'm going to make it that shape, and it can slide it. Like I said, it can slide it horizontally, either direction, up or down, or diagonally. Uh, but its orientation still should be the same. Uh, when it ends up in the other spot. Uh, the, uh, the first copy of it, and this one, we'll call this copy number one, is called the pre-image. And then if it ends up way over here, see this one? Like that, uh, copy number two, that's called the image. So the image is the secondary one. Pre-image, pre meaning before, uh, first, uh, image, second. Now these two shapes, if they really are under a translation, should be congruent, which means they have the exact same uh, measurements for all their sides, all their angles are the same. Um, we don't lose uh, identical size and shape. Okay? So now we're going to talk about this one. So let's say I have a point A at 2, 4 and a point B at 8, 2. Um, we can consider this uh, a vector. A vector has both direction, direction, uh, this one telling you that it's going this direction, and magnitude. In this case, uh, the magnitude happens to be a distance. But as we talk about vectors, when you go on further into physics and into pre-calculus and other stuff like that, um, it's just an amount, and that uh, magnitude could be a distance, it could be a speed, it could be a weight, um, whatever that magnitude is, but that's going in a certain uh, direction, okay? So this one goes from 2, 4, all the way to 8, 2, uh, and we would call this vector AB, if we were to say it like that. The notation is, it looks just like this, so it's got a segment -y like mark, except only got an arrowhead that goes at the top, right? If we put the, the full little connector down here, this little bottom part, if we were to put that red on it like that, that would be considered a ray. And uh, a ray goes on and on and on forever. A vector stops because it only has a certain magnitude. So this vector AB literally is only that long, okay? This vector that goes way out to here would be much different. It'd have a bigger magnitude. It'd go in the same direction, 
but they'd have different magnitudes. So again, uh, vectors and rays differ. Rays are a geometric symbols that show direction going in one, uh, going in the same direction forever. Vectors have specific magnitudes. They only go from the end point um, to the tip. So tail to tip. Okay? Um, and we can't call this BA. We can't call this vector BA. Because vector BA would signify that it's going from B to A, which would change the direction. So make sure that the uh, end point here, end point there. Tip there, tip there. Okay, so what is the magnitude of this vector? Well, the magnitude of this vector um, is, we show it just like this. I oh, know, it's like less than, greater than signs. But they're actually, we don't use parentheses, we don't use brackets, we use these to signify a vector. And uh, it's the change in the x. So this goes from 2 to 8, positive 2 to positive 8. So this vector is 6. And then it goes from 4 down to 2, so the y of 4. So I start with my endpoint, my a, and I go. So 4 to 2 is negative 2. So that 6, negative 2, that vector, could be the same any place. So that if I went right here, and I had that vector, as long as these two things are parallel, and that's why we talked about parallel ones in the last time, and they're the exact same length, they are identical vectors, okay? Because they have a direction, and they have a magnitude, same length, same length, okay? Doesn't matter where they're put any place on the screen as long as they go the same direction and have the same magnitude. So let's look at translations this way. So I have three points, A, 2, 4, B, 3, 7, and C, 5, negative 1. And uh, I'm not going to say any of these are vectors, they're just coordinates. So if I go ahead and plot these, just like this, a, 2, 4, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, that's a, b, 3, 7, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, there's b, and c is 5, negative 1, 4, 5, negative 1, that if I connected those three points in order, going around, I would get a triangle. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at performing a translation on this triangle. And translating the triangle simply says, move the triangle. Uh, I can move it horizontal. I can move it in the other direction horizontally. I can move it vertically up, vertically down. I can move it at a diagonal. As long as I move it a certain direction over a certain distance, there we go. Again, distance and magnitude are the same things. Magnitude just means that I could refer to it as things other than distances, but translations will always be distances. I can do that. So I'm going to show the vector negative 4, negative 2. So the vector negative 4, negative 2 is going to take every single one of these points, wherever they are, and it's going to move it negative 4 horizontally. 1, 2, 3, 4. And negative 2 vertically, right? So this, if this is C, this one becomes C prime. And we put a little dash on there saying it's the part of the image. Same thing again here. So I go 4 to the right for the A and 2 down. I go 4 to the right for the B and 2 down. And I connect these things. And you can see that my triangles should be, and again, I'm not doing this on a perfect thing right here, but the triangle should be that uh, triangle A, B, C is congruent to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. Again, the little dashes on the letters signify that that's my second one, my second image. Here's B prime, here's A prime. And uh, what are those actual locations? Well, if uh, A was 2, 4, then A prime is going to be 4 less, right? 4 from the 2, so that's negative 2. And 2 from the Y, that's positive 2. Negative 2, 2. Negative 2, 2. So it's pretty close on my little freehand sketch. The B, my B prime, right? 
4 away from the 3, so that's negative 1. And 2 away from the 7, that's 5. Negative 1, 5, looks pretty good on the B. And this one, uh, C prime, you guys try that on your own right now. C prime, what's the actual location for it? Go ahead and do that. Awesome. So hopefully you had 1, comma, negative 3. And we can show the vector that did this translation like this. We can also show the translation in uh, translation notation like this. It says that any xy that you had originally, which is the greens, any xy that you had originally, is going to be transformed into an x minus 4, which means all the x values move 4 to the left. Remember, changes to the x or left rights. And to down. Uh, negative refers to left. For the x, negative refers to down for the y. If this was a positive 4, it would move 4 to the right. This was a positive two, it would move two up for each one of those things. Okay? Uh, there's going to be several in the big ideas math that deal with these things in the coordinate axis systems. You just got to plot them in the right way. Again, these two things are uh, pretty much identical in terms of your uh, notations for it. This is vector notation, this is a uh, translation transformation notation. Okay, so down here. Uh, does this look like a translation? So I've got this shape right here, boom, and it slid all the way over here. So uh, uh, does it have a direction? Yes, it definitely went in a certain direction. Good deal. Did it go for a certain distance? Yes, it went for a certain distance. So you're like, yes! Right? Yeah. No, it is not. Because in order for it to be a translation, the two shapes have to be congruent. And this one also changed size, okay? So this should be a big old honkin' no. And the reason it's no is because the two shapes aren't congruent. So now I'll go here. So this shape right here, is this a translation from this pre-image to this image? And uh, even though I can't tell that they're congruent, we're going to say that, hey, they look like they're congruent right now for this portion of it. So we're going to say yes. Yes, that is a translation. What is the actual magnitude? Well, the actual magnitude has to go from one point on the original shape to one point that's the identical point, its image on the secondary shape. So that right there would have to be the vector of that translation. And it would have a certain horizontal component and a certain vertical component, horizontal being the x, vertical component being the y, that gets you from here to here. Assuming this was my original, right? And this was, and we call it original the pre-image. And this one was the image. Good deal? Now, um, these ones right here, let's look. They are, uh, it's definitely moved, right? Uh, and they look like they're congruent. But uh, if this one was to slide directly over there, it should be facing the other direction, right? So this is not a translation, not a translation. It actually is a, it's a reflection, isn't it? Uh, and a reflection is one of the other transformations that we said we were going to talk about. Good deal. So this one right down here. I apologize. Oh my gosh, I'm saying all that stuff and you guys couldn't see my picture. So this one right here, uh, green to green, uh, not a translation. Uh, this one was a reflection. Again, if it was a translation, the uh, uh, orientation, uh, if this is an L in the beginning, it has to be an L the other way, not going backwards. So then uh, this shape right here, uh, assuming my picture is kind of okay, does this look like uh, it could be folded on itself? That's kind of a lead into reflections. So if something can be folded on itself someplace and all the parts on this side line up on all the parts on this side, then we say, yes, this, uh, this can have a what we'll call a line of symmetry. Now it has a vertical one. 
but it doesn't have a horizontal one. There's no horizontal line I can put, because if I flip these down, then those green little pointy things would be at the bottom, and they got to be at the top. Okay? So that is kind of your introduction to core one about how uh, translations go, and uh, we'll get some more stuff on reflections and rotations, and even show you how it works with this stuff, and maybe uh, in class we'll hit something on GeoSketchPad if we can do that. Awesome. Thanks. See you guys later.